Yo, what is going on guys with Morse and bringing us a brand new video and in this video We're gonna be talking about how to scream at Bush Gardens. What's wrong with it? Let's let's really dive deep But before we dive in deep my new single chance is out now wherever you listen to your music link up above link down below So go check out the song after you watch this video every year and especially in the video I made about is Bush Gardens fixing how to scream I talked about a lot of the ideas and a lot of the concepts they had for this year I'm talking about how I saw this as a potential step in the right direction I have now attended Hello scream and I'm very in tune with a lot of the people going every day with like different groups on social media so I have a very finger to the pulse feeling of how Hello scream is going this year thing new year same thing it's they keep promising these updates and these differences and these strategies to make it better but they just kind of stay on an even plane. Now, steps in the right direction they've made over the last few years is reintroducing the Jack character, the Jack O' Lantern character. Reintroducing that and kind of bringing that OG Hallow Scream energy back was awesome. Now, I will say, the good, there were some amazing set pieces and concepts for some of the haunted houses. Lost Minds, I said in my vlog, and I'll say it here Lost Minds, awesome. The concept was awesome. And the performances by the actors inside, it was very populated, made you feel claustrophobic like I was hoping for. And I really enjoyed it. Like the heads coming out at you, that was awesome. Nevermore, Chapter 3, set pieces, awesome. Needed to be more populated. Death's Water Bayou, still, I love it. It's an awesome one. Need to be more populated. And the problem that you'll see a lot, and the root of the issue is staffing. Now, in a previous video, I kind of called it a two-way street. You know, more people should be open to doing it and Bush Gardens needs to pay more. Well, now that I've got a little bit more finger on the pulse and I've heard from a few people, it's not as two-sided as you think. Monster Stomp on Ripper Row, it's a show I love and it's sad to see that it might be going, almost didn't happen because they weren't able to cast and they were down to the wire trying to cast people for it. I don't mean to be critical about Bush Gardens. I try not to be tr critical. I try to be fair. I'm gonna try to be as fair as I can be. But you know, just gotta call it how I see it. Uh, one thing is, crowds. The day I was there, I think they were at capacity. They were at capacity over this final weekend of Hallow Scream, and people were having to walk the tram route. Imagine someone that's handicapped, but they couldn't afford good parking, or all the handicapped spots were taken. So they're like, okay, we can take the tram up to the park, and then get a stroller, and you know, but the tram isn't running. You gotta have someone there for injuries, just for disability. You've got to have it. I looked at jobs for uh, Bush Gardens because I contemplated moving to Williamsburg about a year or so ago. And I can tell you why there's not a lot of people there. It's to pay. Certain jobs you get paid pretty good, but other ones, not so much. And to go through the hours of makeup and costuming and standing out in the heat chasing people, if you're making right at minimum wage or maybe just slightly above it, is that really enough for all the time? Because not only do you have to put the makeup on, you got to get the makeup off. And a lot of times that's a harder and a lot more time consuming. And not to mention you're having to deal with drunk people, people that are just scared. And because of the no boo necklaces, you got to be on the lookout of who has one, who doesn't. So you know who you can and cannot scare. But I will say the people that showed up and the people that were there, fantastic. And I said it in my video and I've seen it put everywhere else. In Italy, where you had like the people in stone, they were fantastic. Credit to them. Like I said, when the actors that were there were great. The chainsaws, always great. The people in Festa Italia were awesome. Fest Italia was actually really populated, which was awesome. But then you go to other parts of the park where it's just nothing. You walk into England and you had the arches when you walk in, but there's no hands and feet hanging down because I heard that people were like, that's just too gross. Well, then why had the arches there anyway? Bush Gardens has definitely peeled back intensity of Howl's Scream. Even though this year, they seem to be a little bit more pushing of the, if you don't want to be scared, be gone by six and the parental, advi parental ad advisory, they seem to be pushing that a lot more, which got me excited because I'm like, Okay, we're going back to that OG, you know, dark side of the gardens, cursed style where they, when six o'clock comes, it's game on. They will not hold back. And the problem is, I'm going to get on a little rant here. The problem is the no boo necklaces. They're a big root of the problem because apparently people were complaining that it was too scary of an event. A Halloween event was too scary. So they introduced the idea of no boo necklaces so people that didn't want to get scared wouldn't be scared. When I was a young tyke, when six o'clock came around, I was ready to get out of the park. Those actors didn't hold back. If you were there after six o'clock, that's on you. And that's how it should still be. I don't understand why we had this whole change of, well, you know, you need to look out for people that don't want to be scared. If you don't want to be scared, don't be there. And yes, people will be like, well, I have a condition where if I get 
startled very easily or stuff like that. And I understand. I am not discounting that either. But you are at a Halloween event. You need to know why you're there. The park is open for eight hours before that starts. So you have the ability to plan out your day so you can avoid that. But there should not be any asterisks on, well, 6 o'clock. Well, you, all right, all right, actors, 6 o'clock comes, you go after them. Uh, the, the, the little kids hold back, though. And if they had no boob necklaces, eh, hold back on them, too. I remember they used to have the signs everywhere where the only rule between the actor and the visitor was don't touch them, they don't touch you. That was the only rule. No, no boot necklaces. No, take it easy. Just do not touch them. They won't touch you. And they went intense. I remember there's some people like in wolf costumes. They were intense. The demon people like in France one year, intense. The Wendigo Woods people, oh, when they were calling on the ground, whoo. The vampires, they were intense. I mean, I just remember this intense nature. And maybe it was because I was a little kid, so maybe I perceived it differently. But from what I'm gathering from social media, no, I perceived it how it was. It was more intense. It was more scary. And that is a staffing problem. But it's also just the principles behind your laying down the ideas of the event. You have these amazing concepts of haunted houses. Like, I can't complain about any of the concepts that they have. They're all really cool, and the set pieces are awesome. But then, like, in Killarney Diner, one that I have loved over the past few years, a lot of elements were missing. Like, where was the car? And never more. You had to take a hike to get to that and Witch of the Woods. It shouldn't be such a hike to get to that place because now you're taking people out of the equation to do it. They have maybe one actor that's out there trying to scare people, but even then, they're too nice. They're, like, dapping it up and just making jokes, which is all fun. You want to make the audience feel engaged. Don't try to be their best friend. You're in there to terrorize people. You are there to scare the living daylights out of people. And if you're not doing that, then what's the point of having a Halloween event? At this point, the whole thing is essentially to count spooktacular because you could take a three-year-old in those haunted houses and they won't get scared. There's nothing to be scared of anymore. And to see so many things go like there's not even a show in the Abbey Stone Theater. The Abbey Stone Theater is just a walkthrough to get around when Jack is back is playing, that hurts. Because Fiends was such a good show. When Fiends left and all the cool theming of the park left, Hollow Screen changed dramatically. It changed before the problems caused by the pandemic. It was already on a downhill slope. And then the pandemic just more shot it down even further. It really, it really, it's just really upsetting. You know, as a diehard Bush Gardens fan, and I see it from a lot of people in those groups, we're ready for Hollow Screen to take that turn back to intensity. No, no boo necklaces. And I saw this guy. I think he worked at Bush Gardens, Tampa. But he said, "If I see a new, if I see a no boo necklace, I go even harder." And a lot of people were going after him, like, "What are you doing, man? That's not right. They're wearing that necklace so you don't scare them." He still has the idea and the principles that Hollow Screen always had, which was, "You're in the park. You choose to be scared." If not, there are signs everywhere. They, they used to, and this is the thing too, they have signs around the park saying, if you don't want to be scared, be out by 6 p.m. But people really aren't scared of it. So there's just signs around. But back in the day, over the PA systems around the park, they used to make announcements of, if you don't want to be scared, you need to be out by 6 in a nice like dear voice be out by 6 a.m before the creeps come out to play i mean the music changed in the park and you just knew it was like this whole feeling the whole aura of the park just changed and you just got like oh oh this game on and i mean when they came out the creeps came out running trying to scare people now it's a brisk little walk and they'll scare one person yelling in their face and then they're just having a conversation with someone else and it, at the root of the problem is the ideology that Bush Gardens is spearheading how to scream with. The two solutions are pay your people more, putting themselves to a hell of a lot of work, and also the idea of what how to scream is has kind of gotten lost. It used to be this terrifying event. Now it's like more just a general Halloween event with a few people trying to scare you, but rather unsuccessful. And I went into this year with so much hope because there seemed to be so much buildup on social media and on the website that oh, this is it. They're, they're getting it back to where it needs to be. It was the same old. We can speak out on social media because Bush Gardens definitely notices trends on social media. I think that's why Dark Castle became Dark Coaster. But until enough voices are raised outside of Facebook groups, nothing's going to change because they're making money. 
selling out the park capacity every day. So when all they care about is the numbers, and that's not a bad thing. I've said it before. When Bush Gardens looks just at the numbers to generate success, it's not a bad thing. That's how you run a business. That's just how you run a business. That's, that's 101. There's nothing wrong with that, and I do not blame them for that. But as we're approaching the 50th, you want to see a more integration with the fan base. They're starting that with Loch Ness Monster, having this membership day this Saturday with a town hall with the president, making sure the fan base and the president are at least transparent if we're not on the same page. Or maybe we're able to get on the same page. Like I said, the great thing about Bush Gardens leadership recently has been transparency. So they're being transparent with us. We ought to be transparent with them and let them know how we feel. And I know how you Bush Gardens fans feel, as I do. That Hallow Scream needs to change. But other than that, I had a great day at Bush Gardens. I'm with the Hallow Scream. You can check out the vlog on the channel. It was still a great day. Like I said, I love the haunted houses. The set pieces are awesome. The scare actors are awesome. It's just not enough. That's simply it. It's not enough. And they don't go as hard as they should. So let me know what you guys think down below. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure to like this video if you enjoyed. Make sure to hit that bell button down below so you are notified every single time with a brand new video to the channel. And go stream my new song, Chance, out now wherever you listen to your music. My name is Will Morrison. I'm out.